Good morning, everybody. It's Betty. I am uh, <clears throat> going to be talking to you about the fourth day of my Vipassana training, and I'm here at home. Uh, <clears throat> last week, we talked about uh, the first three days of the Vipassana training, and my intention is to walk you through the learnings that I had through the 10-day silent meditation training. And um, so I'm just going to give you a really quick overview uh, of what that was about. And then we can go through um, uh, the, the basically what, um, what, you, what the, the, the areas that we went through on day four, which was the beginning of actual Vipassana. <clears throat> so uh, day four uh, was uh, kind of... The, the beginning of Vipassana after three days, if you recall, the first three days were really focused on uh, getting prepared to come to Vipassana. And it was really getting, um, getting your mind prepared. And um, it was all about observing the reality as it is. And I have learned this week um, a lot of things because I've had a lot of experiences this week that I'm going to be talking to you about that equate to how I'm starting to go kind of deeper into uh, getting mastery of my mind and being able to be more focused and being able to make decisions a lot faster. When I asked my staff this week, what, what are you seeing any difference in me? And they're, they're saying, yes, absolutely. Uh, what they're seeing is uh, that they are, uh, that I'm more focused, I'm thinking through things more, uh, I'm not reacting quite as quickly, uh, which can be good or bad, depending on where you are, uh, but um, looking at the framework of the body was uh, it, 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 looking at reality as it is, so um, the meditation happens not outside, um, and it isn't something that you focus on the outside. You don't have any mantras or anything. The meditation happens by looking at your own body, and by doing so, you can begin to, be, to create some parallels between what you're feeling and then what's happening outside of your body. Uh, started to really pay attention on the fourth day to closer areas of my body, um, gross sensations in the body, and then uh, as, as my mind got uh, sharper, then I started feeling more subtle sensations in the body, uh, like atomic particles of the body. Uh, and, and it's uh, I was researching that right before this and their um, quantum phenomenon is what they're called is the gross sensations of the body or the or the or the little tiny sensations that you begin to feel <clears throat> so again the first um, hi Holly thank you for joining <clears throat> so the first part of this <clears throat> excuse me the first three days uh, of the silent meditation. Again, it was silent because the idea was to not begin to focus on somebody else. And when the Akumu says, Holly, if you don't focus on somebody else and you only focus on yourself, is back to that same uh, uh, way of looking at yourself. If I am competing against somebody that's number one and my capability is this high, then what I'm doing is I'm limiting myself to their limitations. And so you really want to work on yourself and then, um, then you can really begin to work deeper and make yourself better, better than you were before, rather than work uh, against somebody else who may not have as high of a limitation or as high of a talent or may have a different life altogether. So it's just better for us to look at ourselves. Uh, one of the things that we started on day four, and hopefully you have observed or you've watched day three, uh, one, two, and three were really focusing on calming your mind and getting uh, mastery of your mind and what I noticed this week was the days I, I went a couple of days without uh, meditating and when I went to meditate uh, 
<clears throat> my mind was going all over the place and it was um, it wasn't as easy to get my mind to calm down normally I can get my mind to calm down very quickly and what that means is have you ever been in a conversation and or been in a lecture and or in a meeting and somebody says something and then all of a sudden you realize oh wait a minute what did you say because I was thinking about something else that's what they're talking about it's really getting mastery of your mind and to a point where you are actually focused on whatever's in front of you and not focused on anything else or whomever is in front of you and not focused on anybody else have you been to a meeting and a gathering where somebody instead of looking at you in the eyes they're just kind of looking at you and looking at everybody else it makes you feel like they're not really focused on you and that you're not that important to them it's the same thing and the same principle is really being able to focus on your own self and not allow your mind's fleeting thoughts to come. You just observe them coming and then they come and then they go. Everything comes and goes or everything comes and changes depending on who you talk to. So they asked us to move in order in your body. We started by really at the top of your body, trying to feel sensations up on top. Once our mind was clear and our mind became sharp, we started to feel, I started to feel sensations all the way from the top of my head, all the way down through my face and my neck and my arms and then down my legs, not so much in my torso. But the sensations were different, so we were supposed to be focusing on whatever sensation, whether it's heat or cold or, or even just your clothing on your body or whatever sensations, and that's how we started. We began to move to, the, to, to getting closer areas around the body so that we could feel the sensations. Now, we started with gross sensations, meaning if it was pain, and there was an experience that I wanna share with you that was a profound experience for me and it brought me a lot of learnings. As I was sitting there meditating, I felt this pain in my back and I remember feeling, <clears throat> and I've mentioned it very lightly in the other posts, but I'm gonna go deeper into this one here because this happened on day four. This pain in my back, I remember feeling and thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be painful. This is so painful. I didn't realize, now we would meditate for about an hour at a time, not about exactly an hour at a time. And by the end of the hour, when I woke up or when I, not woke up, when I opened my eyes, I had been focusing so much on the pain that literally my hands were like this. They were, um, and, and my body was even not not relaxed. You know, when you stand up and you're relaxed, it was, it was crunched up like that and it was painful. When I woke up, I looked at myself and I thought, oh my gosh, what was that about? And then I realized, and I've gone back to that moment how many times when something is painful in our lives, what we do is we focus on the pain and we say, this is so painful, oh, I'm going through such terrible time and this is so painful. What happened to me was I was focusing so much on the pain that the, the pain became exaggerated. By the pain becoming exaggerated, then it just felt almost like it was overpowering and I couldn't focus on anything else. I wasn't focusing on the beauty around me. I wasn't focusing on my breath. I wasn't focusing on <clears throat> the beautiful climate. Nothing else. I was only focusing on that, and that was it. So if you think about that, uh, these intense sensations, and what I'm looking at is just my notes that I wrote right before here so I wouldn't forget anything. Um, you're training your mind to really focus on things, but look at them as they are, equanimously. <clears throat> and that again, it was a new word for me, is equanimity, is being able to understand the truth and experience it as it is without um, any judgment, but understand it and see it at the experiential level. 
So I, it was, I was training my mind to being able to see the experience and to watch it. So by the end of the 10 days, hey Rosanna, how are you? By the end of the 10 days, what happened was the, the pain would come or the bad experiences would come and I would just observe them equanimously and they would come and then they would go. Well, little did I know I was going to be receiving some bad news when I got back to work and um, and normally I would have been devastated and normally I would have felt like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? It's going to be impossible and how am I going to do this and how am I going to do that? And, and instead of that, there was a, someone that is very close to me that was leaving and going to another company. And instead of focusing on the negative part, I focused on how wonderful it is that she's getting a beautiful experience, how wonderful it is that she's getting to fly and to do whatever she wants to do, and it, and it was a positive thing for her, and why would I only focus on me and my pain and how much I'm going to miss her and all of that, when I can focus on her and how wonderful of an experience she's going to have. In my last week, which should have been a devastating week, was a wonderful week and it was a week of celebration. In fact, her last day we went out and celebrated her and, and it was a beautiful thing. It wasn't a sad thing. Were there tears? Yeah, toward the end. But, but the tears came when I started thinking about the devastation. Now, we focused on the positive things and we got things done and everything was ready for when she was to depart. And as a result, we're not missing a beat. So back in, 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 in the meditation, it's the same thing. When you started, when I started to focus on the pain, then everything was around that pain. How many times have we had uh, situations in our life when we've had negative thoughts or negative or maybe a conversation where somebody said something and we made it up in our head that what they said was meant for us to, to suffer? Well, when we didn't even ask, when, where if we just pick up the phone and ask, hey, you just said this, what did you mean by that? And by understanding, again, by receiving the information equanimously and not making a judgment, because the moment we make a judgment, then we feel it in our body, and then we make up stories about it, and then those stories begin to, it's almost like a, like a, a ball of, like a snowball. It just begins to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it all of a sudden overpowers us, just like the pain in my meditation was overpowering me to the point where at the end of the hour, my body was just crunched up and I woke up, I, I, I opened my eyes and I looked at my body and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is what I do to myself whenever something negative happens. I'm not going to do that again. And so, as a result, this is what's been happening. So, experiencing the pain was uh, interesting because experiencing it equanimously, without having any judgment or putting any titles on it, but just saying, okay, this pain is coming, everything that comes goes, so just like the pain came, it's going to go, and it did, and it went. The next time I came back uh, to meditate again, I looked at it equanimously and I looked at the pain and I thought, okay, the pain is coming. Let me just focus on that pain. That's a sensation. Let me look at it. Let me focus on it. It's going to go. And it just went. It came and went. And the pain, instead of being magnified, it was significantly reduced as I waited for the pain to go away and then the pain went. How wonderful it would be for us in our life if we were able to teach this to our children when they're small, if we were able to do this now and whenever we have a bad situation. So instead of averting the situation, remember we talked about craving and aversion and, um, and ignorance not being too good. And so if we were able to just receive it as it comes, hold it, observe it equanimously, make decisions with a clear mind, then we can make those decisions and then as it goes, the decisions are more, more uh, succinct, they're better decisions. One of the things that I read in one of the books, when, when one is ignorant, sensations are 
a means to multiply one's misery because one reacts to them with craving and aversion. So when we have a sensation, when we have a negative sensation, um, then that's what happens. They say never try to select sensations, accept what comes naturally. This is something really important and it's a big lesson that uh, a big insight I had this week. In the past, if I had something that was going to be coming or, or a situation that was going to arise, I would try to manipulate my way to make sure that something happened that I wanted to happen instead of allowing things to happen naturally as they're going to happen. This week I had uh, some uh, advice from someone to to talk to someone about a situation and they said why don't you just bring it up this way and it was um, it wasn't a hundred percent truth and so I decided to just bring it up with a hundred percent truth and the and the result was a very positive result how many times do we manipulate or we say half truths and we get the results we want but they're not natural results these things don't happen naturally and if they don't happen naturally then they're not meant to happen and then something is going to divert from it for example when I am interviewing someone this week we had a situation um, and if there's someone that is um, in the middle of uh, leaving the company and they leave because of money I always say, well, I'm not going to uh, react because of money. If they're leaving because they're not happy, then that's a different story. Then let's have a conversation. But if you're leaving because of money, because I know that we pay, we pay fairly, uh, then it's a different story altogether, right? So, so I go and 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 tell the the individual, have the conversation with this individual, and talk to them about how much value they're adding, how much value they're getting, and let's see why. They're thinking that they really want to do this. Turns out that this person wasn't leaving because of money. It was, they were leaving because of a misunderstanding. And so how many times do we just say, okay, well, let's just give him more money. Let's give him more money. If we would have given him more money and only focused on that, the misunderstanding would have stayed there. And it would have fostered and it would have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And that person uh, would have left eventually. So allowing things to happen as they naturally happen, not choosing sensations, meaning not choosing, this is how the situation needs to go. And, and I want to differentiate between being a leader and orchestrating something. If you're orchestrating change, again, you orchestrate the change at a higher level, at a strategic level, but allow people to go in their strengths and go in the areas where they're strong, go in the areas where they're naturally strong, if you try to force somebody or yourself to go in an area where you're not naturally strong, things are not going to go well. You're going to feel it in your body. You're going to get sick. People around you are not going to be happy and so forth. So it's going to be really important to do that. So between manipulation and acceptance, it's really important to just accept things as they are and to look at them exactly like they are, not with anything that... Um, I am judging, not with judgment, but just really look at them as they are. Hi, Eileen, good to see you. Um, <clears throat> so understanding the truth of the experiential level. Uh, there's cause and effect. There is a seed that is planted, and the fruit that bears that seed is according to the ground and according to the seed that is planting. Uh, thank you. I love you so much, Eileen. Thank you so much. You're going to make me cry. Hi, Angelica. So let's talk about cause and effect. So you have a seed, you have a thought, and it begins with your thoughts, and that's the seed. Whatever actions happen as a result of that seed, those are the actions that are going to happen because of the seed that you've planted. You touch my soul, Eileen. I can't go on. <laughs> so those, so the actions, right? Um, physical actions, vocal actions, or mental actions. Those actions are going to create your results. Good morning, Angelica. So, but the actions are really tied to 
your consciousness wherever you are. So let's go through this really quickly because I think I only have like another six or seven minutes. Think about sound. Sound comes in and then there is perception. The perception is I got words of praise so the sound is good or I got words of abuse and so the sound is bad, right? So first the sound and then the perception begins to happen. And then a sensation happens as a result of that perception. And the sensation, hi Jesse, welcome. And that sensation is either a pleasant sensation or an unpleasant sensation. So back to the sound, we heard a sound and it was a word of praise. So we made up that that sound was, was good. And so we felt pleasant sensations or we heard a word of abuse, of what we interpreted as being abuse. It, it isn't necessarily words of abuse. This is how we're interpreting it. And so we say this was a bad sound that came in. And so the perception was this is bad. And then the sensation is an unpleasant sensation. And then the reaction happens to what we have just perceived based on our interpretation of what just happened, then the reaction is a mental reaction. And this is where it, it, it is the most important part, is what happens in our mind in the reaction. Notice that the sound happened first, then the perception, then the sensation, and then the reaction. In the past, we've talked about the amygdala, in the prefrontal cortex. The amygdala creates your fight or flight reaction. Uh, you are being told something negative and so you say, I don't want this. And so your amygdala fires and it's, it's fight or flight immediately. Well, if your sensation in your body reacts first before your mental mind is able to react, then you're able to catch that in your body, you're able to perceive it in your body before you react. And this is the beauty of this type of technique that I've learned. And it's, and again, I'm, I'm not, I don't get any money for this or anything. I just want to share because it's so profound that I just feel like, oh my goodness, if more people were able to interpret and receive things from a place of unbiased, from a clean place, from a clear place, and be able to react accordingly, then this world would be so much better. And as leaders, we are called to not judge our people. As leaders, we are called to just receive them as they are and to, to take a look at what are their strengths. And based on their strengths, then put them in the positions that equal their strengths. It's very simple. It's, it's sometimes not easy, but it's very simple in all of these things that we're talking about are just very simple things. Take a look at someone, say your partner, if they say something and it hurts or it feels exactly from a place of curiosity, appreciation and grace. Thank you, Eileen. And you know, I call that, there's, a, there's something that I just called and I don't know if somebody else has quoted it, but it's innocent curiosity, right? So when you think of children and they're asking, hey mommy, why is it that you say this? That's innocent curiosity. It isn't, uh, why did you say this like that, right? So there are two different ways of, of being inquisitive, but from that innocent curiosity. When we come from that place, those are the seeds that we're planting. We're planting pure seeds because we're coming from a pure heart. We're coming from a pure mind. We've cleared our mind. Things are not muddling in our head. We're able to think through. And because we have clear a clear mind and yeah, courageous curiosity also, because sometimes we're we're feeling like we don't want to ask because we're afraid to ask. I was just talking to um, some kids, mentors and mentees from Dallas. Uh, just a minute ago, uh, I did a presentation and we were talking about the power of just being courageous and being able to raise your hand and say, can I go or raise your hand and say, can I, would you mind? Or let me ask the question and, and be in and getting through that and having the courage to, but always from a place of 
gratitude, appreciation, exactly. And, and I, I so agree with you, Eileen. Thank you so much for adding so much value to this. Uh, and, and coming from that place, when you're coming from gratitude, think about it. You wake up in the morning and you feel something, but then you say, oh my goodness, I am alive. I get to make a difference today and how wonderful it is. And then all of a sudden your world changes. It's exactly the same thing. It's really feeling in your body and feeling the, same, the things that you're going to feel, but looking at them equanimously and without judgment. Uh, so those are the things that I learned this week, uh, and, and these are the things that I learned on day four. Again, on day four is when we started the actual uh, Vipassana, um, and if you want to learn more about it, I have a, um, a Vip the Art of Vipassana Meditation. It's a little uh, booklet that they gave us, and it is a discourse that Goenka, who was the teacher, gave um, in uh, I believe in Switzerland and it is the, the best piece that I have seen I can um, I can actually scan it and send it to you if you want just IM me with your email address and I'll scan it and send it to you um, it'll walk you through kind of the the, the whole um, uh, Vipassana meditation next week I'm going to talk about day five Again, on day four, we started the Vipassana. Next week, I'll talk about day five, which is one day into the Vipassana, where I'll talk to you about some of the sensations that I started feeling and what those meant and how I've learned about all of that in my business life and also in my personal life. So this afternoon, I fly out to Utah to see my daughter, Alex. She's getting a big blessing from her church. And uh, so Sandra and I are flying in. Sandra's flying from Colorado and I'm flying from uh, California. We get to spend time with her and I get to see my beautiful friend Shauna. And it's going to be a wonderful weekend and I can't wait. I wish you a wonderful, wonderful weekend. It's beautiful outside. Enjoy it. Uh, live in gratitude and appreciation and grace with courageous curiosity and innocent curiosity. And I will see you next week. Bye, everyone.